The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This is Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw Dating, preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now, your hosts, Christy Scales, Aisha Morrison, Nicole Hutchison, and Jess Navarez. Welcome in to Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys in the SWBC studio. I'm Nicole Hutchison, alongside Jess Navarez and Isaiah Morris. <laughs> oh, y'all. Okay, that's what we're on today. Yes! All right. No, oh, we love I, you. Aisha Morris. We love you. Pain. Isaiah Morris. Y'all, oh. backstory. <laughs> I'm sorry. They gave her the wrong name tag. <laughs> they did. That's crazy. He completely like. <laughs> he just disregarded your name. I got a brother named, I guess. I'm. It's oh fine. My God. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Hey. Well, Aisha. Yes. I, to be you. fair, right before we started recording, I almost called you Isaiah. <laughs> Just like naturally. This is where Isaiah sits, too. So that makes sense. I know. Easy. I think so, yeah. So oh, that's funny. All right. That's funny, y'all. I'm well, sorry. My bad. I had to start off on a good yeah, note. Yeah. Uh, that's perfect. Whew, unfortunately, I mean, well, not really unfortunate because let's just hope it doesn't happen. Uh, we got some news reports say that um, teams have requested to interview, of course, defensive coordinator Dan Quinn and VP of player personnel Will McClay. <clears throat> We do not want to see them to go, of course. Uh, but I listened. I know Jess also listened to Jerry Jones this morning on 105 through the fan. And uh, Jerry, basically, what, what I got from <laughs> what I got from that is that, uh, of course, uh, a lot of teams uh, were interested in several coaches. So yeah. not just Dan Quinn and Will McClay, but um, he did make it clear that they are not required to uh, <laughs> grant permission. Uh, made it very clear. He made it very clear that they are not required to grant permission uh, nowadays. So uh, let, let's hope that they don't <clears throat> grant permission for Dan Quinn and Will McClay. You heard that, Jerry? Uh, but no. Uh, yeah, I he mean, listens all the time. Listen, yeah. Uh, so let's just. <laughs> but no, uh, that was just the gist of it. Um, they did ask, you know, what's the, your confidence level in yeah. keeping Dan Quinn and Will McClay? And um, we didn't get. A, concrete answer um for that one but hopefully hopefully those guys those two guys stay but that's a it's great opportunities for dan quinn to possibly be a head coach and uh will mcclay to be a gm but i know they're they're really happy in dallas yeah and you know it's it's the same conversation pretty much the last three years because they've been successful um and jerry talked about that he said when you're having success like this obviously you're going to be more attractive to other teams in the nfl and Mm -hmm. rightfully so for teams that are struggling and want to start a new chapter in a new era that's gonna find success where it can um but honestly (laughs) all of that doesn't really matter this week to me i obviously we have to talk about and we have to report on it because it's our job and that's our due diligence i don't care uh, the focus mm-hmm. is on the playoffs. Period. The focus is on the Packers. <clears throat> and I, based on how Dan handled this last year when it came up around the same time, I can pretty much guarantee he is laser focused. Okay. Despite all of the outside uh, noise and chatter, he wants his team to win. And, mm-hmm. and all of their priority right now is to win and starting with the Packers on Sunday. They... Uh, I get why it's a conversation. We talked about this yesterday, but it's not its not the focus right now, <clears throat> for me at least, yeah. and, and I don't think it is for anybody in this building. Something. Oh, okay. go ahead, no, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go. Aisha feels away about Please. this. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, listen, <laughs> I don't make the rules. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you I do. I simply here. Are you kidding me? You make all the rules. Listen, some of this stuff. I mean, again, I understand Black was a Black Monday. Black Monday, yeah. yeah. I'll call it is what is what happened, and so <clears throat> these conversations come up and stuff like that. But I just there's something about it being in the middle of playoffs that mm-hmm. I just don't, I'm not fond of. And again, even if it is how football works and stuff, I'm entitled to say how I feel about it, and I don't yep. like it yeah. because <clears throat> even though we don't think it's it's not a distraction to. Uh, Dan Quinn and those guys because they're able to you know stay focused I believe Jerry said that there could end up being 12 
um, 12 12 interviews mm -hmm. from this staff it's because it's not even yeah. i mean adam Durde has done a great job um I, f I think that obviously joe witt and those guys al harris like they've had tenure here too yeah. and i i don't know all the rules and stuff and i guess i have to look into it but it's just something about the fact that like yeah i understand you trying to get better this team got stuff to do right now That's facts yeah this baby we need to find a way for this to wait because uh, i just don't <laughs> And I, I mean, again, it, maybe it is just a part of the business and stuff. I personally don't like it. Um, not, again, and it's not to say that these coaches can't stay focused and everything. I understand it's the business, but it really is getting on my nerves having to talk about it every year. And it's 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 getting on my nerves. Something I mean, that, oh. if it makes you feel better, it wouldn't be a discussion if the Cowboys were not playing well. That's and very it true. does make me, I mean, <laughs> again, true. like, yeah, what this coaching staff has done and, and, and the team that they put together, to your point, it is a testament of yeah. the fact mm -hmm. that people look at, and even when you talk about a Will McClay, what he's done from the scouting, uh, from the scouting side of things, being the head of the scouting department and the production that you've mm -hmm. gotten from <clears throat> down the roster, down the draft guys and, and stuff like that, it is, it is a testament to these gentlemen and what they do and that they're good at what they're doing y'all can wait <laughs> yeah no, and even um jerry even said um i'm sorry my bad jerry even <laughs> jerry sorry, even said that yeah my bad i had to look that <laughs> uh jerry had even said that or he was asked you know are you discouraged at all about the multiple calls that you've been getting and the requests you've been getting about your coaching staff and he was like no that just says that we're doing something right. Yeah. You yeah. Know, they have a lot of success right now. And like you mentioned, I will both of y'all mention that if the Cowboys weren't having a successful season, do you think they'd be calling? Nope. Okay. I guarantee you nobody's <laughs> calling Washington for anything right now. Mm -hmm. Guarantee you that. They're, they're the ones making all the calls, I apparently. Not. I'd hope not. Mm -hmm. Um. Some. I, sorry, I was writing Nicole notes I didn't, over I'm here. Sorry, I could, I was, no, it's okay. My I handwriting. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to <laughs> speed write. Horrible handwriting. Um. <laughs> Something he also talked about that I wanted to mention on here is Mike, Mc Mike McCarthy's job security. Uh, he talked about that after the Washington game. And it was it was his his answer was pretty straightforward until the end where he said, we'll see how the games play out. Mm -hmm. And and the media took that line specifically, didn't hear anything he said previously to yeah. it and it blew it out of proportion. Yeah. So Jerry was asked about that specific line today on the fan. And he basically said, I don't know how to make this any more clear. Mike Reddy has a contract for next year. Like, I don't know what else you want me to tell you. Yeah. Uh, it, it can't be any more clear. And he just said he's really happy with what Mike has done this season. So I, I really hope we can put that conversation to bed, too, mm -hmm. because I'm really tired of the speculation of the playoff success dictating whether Mike has a job or not after the season here in Dallas, mm -hmm. because Everything he has done up until this point, this coaching staff that he's put together, mm -hmm. the the offensive turnaround, the three, what is it, 360? Or is it 180? 180. 180. 180. Y'all got mad at me about this last no, year. No, it's 180. Is 180? Yeah. The 180 he's done. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because 360 is all the way. Right back okay. to where it was. Yeah, yeah. The 180 he's done for this offense yeah. is not to be discredited. And I understand the urgency of needing a playoff win, getting past the divisional round, wanting to go back to the NFC Championship game. Mm -hmm. I get that. You're in a 30-year dry spell. But let's put to bed the conversation of Mike McCarthy losing his job because of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm sick of that, too, if we're venting today. Yeah. I know that we're, we're – that's something that we don't want to talk about um, with the possibility of DQ and Will McClay leaving. Um, but I've got to ask – do y'all think that there's a chance that we could possibly lose DQ and Will McClay? Yeah. I think there's far more of a chance with the DQ yep. than, mm -hmm. a, than, than a Will McClay. Okay. I, there's just so many, like, <clears throat> intricate details on and to losing, like, a, a head of scouting yeah. or someone that's in player personnel because it's a trickle-down effect, you know what I'm saying? So I do think that it has more – that's more of a chance, to, especially since um, DQ's been – he's been – up for these these jobs yeah. I, I just think um the number of head coaching jobs that comes open we know is limited every year and so he's been passing up on them for the mm -hmm. last few years at some point in time and maybe it's not this year but at some point in time he is gonna be like you know what 
and I mean, and again, like even though I was fussing about the interviews, this yeah. is still good experience and stuff for them to go, you know, to go get to go get those interviews and to get that experience. But then also too, I mean, again, like it says something about them and their work ethic, and that's what they work towards is to get those calls yeah. and to get to get better. But they do both seem comfortable in what's going on here, and I mean, it will be an adjustment, but. Not right now, because they're going into the playoffs. Albert Breer from NBC Sports Boston actually (laughs) said that um, DQ is planning on taking interviews with the Commanders, Panthers, and Chargers at the end of next week. That's what he reported. That's cool. Yeah. Um, Well, and here's my thing, too. (laughs) Sorry. I don't know if y'all noticed. I'm kind of battling this ongoing cough. And I, I had some tweets yesterday like you good sis i'm i'm good i'm just uh <laughs> battling through it but yeah. sorry for being annoying and coughing in y'all's ears um <laughs> what i wanted to say that is was me a month ago <laughs> it's real it's uh it's hard out here uh what i wanted to say was i'd be interested to see how possibly the mindset changes depending on how far the cowboys go in the playoffs Ooh. Because you can't tell me that it doesn't make it a little bit more difficult to leave this team if you're pushing thresholds that haven't been pushed in 30 years. Of course. So I'm interested to kind of see that. And look, if you're Dan Quinn, why wouldn't you entertain interviews? Why Mm -hmm. wouldn't you entertain an opportunity for growth? Yeah. Uh, Anybody would. Um, But I'm interested (coughs) at some point when all of this is said and done to kind of go back and maybe ask him – if if the Cowboys do well, they break that threshold, if that was kind of a determining factor on if he decides to stay or not, depending on everything that happens going forward. Now also, too, um, just to finish, finish off the conversation about yeah. this, the state of the NFC mm. is... It's really trivial in a sense of even when you start... I've, I've already glanced, y'all. I've glanced at some of the draft prospects and some of that stuff there's only so many starting quarterbacks to go around and there's only there's a lot of teams in the nfc specifically that are in this kind of rebuilding phase trying to figure things out whatever so to your point jess um i mean why not they ran it back this year and you see how far you get i do think there is something to be said about looking across the nfl and looking at where it is and you have a team that you've put together a staff that you've put together that you know is every year taking another step forward to your point i that is something to consider as well so. yeah and i'm also interested to see how heading into it which of course we'll talk about the matchup in the next two breaks or in, next two segments um but with all of this noise kind of coming out right now about the possibility of dq taking interviews and things like that how the guys kind of mentality is yeah. you know heading into green bay i mean you just obviously don't want um them to be worried about what's the possibility of losing a coordinator um, in the off season, but I, I also wonder how they kind of handle that as well. Yeah, I'm sure how, he's talked to them you? about. Yeah. I'm sure he's talked to them about it. I feel like last year, yeah, the players, some of the players said yeah. that he had the conversation oh, with them awesome. like let yeah. them know hey this i'm letting you guys know before you hear it anywhere else i am mm-hmm. taking these interviews whatever the yep. case may be he, awesome. it's not like he kept them very in the loop of what was yeah. going on um but also too after that playoff game you've mentioned it numerous times after the 49ers game a lot of the players were uh, emotional because they understood mm-hmm. Yep. This doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. There's guys on this roster that you're not going to see next year. Yeah. And that includes staff as yeah. well. Yeah. So I do think there is an understanding of this business and the turnover and things, how things go. But I do also know that these guys are very connected to Dan Quinn. Mm-hmm. And he's yep. really re- revamped and changed a lot of how some of these guys play football. Yeah. I also wonder if it makes them play a little harder. Mm. Oh, I'm, if if it if yeah. it adds some juice to say like we want him to stay, yeah, facts, and we're gonna work our tails off to make sure that we break that threshold to give him reason to want to stay even more. Mm-hmm. Um, I and you know what's what's really cool about this team is they know how to stay in the moment, right? And and honestly. I wonder how calloused they are from this conversation if they've been here been years prior yeah. because it's not anything new anymore. Yeah. And when you have somebody like Dan and they understand how special of a coach he is, it's really not unexpected for him to entertain these conversations or opportunities. Yeah, they want him to grow too. And they want the best for him. They care about him as a person. They care about him as a coach. So um, 
honestly, I think it's like a little more emotional reaction on the outside yeah. than it would be in the locker room. Yeah. It ties into the <clears throat> listening to Dan Quinn yesterday. We didn't get to see the coordinators because we were, you know, here. Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> that, uh, the, you know, come on. <laughs> but um, we were. Yeah, we're we here. were. But we're right here. Sitting listening right here. to Actually, Dan I was Quinn. Right there, but yeah. But listening to Dan Quinn yesterday. <laughs> He feels very th- – there was a sense of confidence from every coordinator I listened to yesterday. Yep. Mm-hmm. They they are ready, and mm-hmm. they seem like they really have a very sure understanding, even more than I think last year, to uh-huh. your point, Jess, yep. about DQ and focusing on what's happening right now. I do feel like listening to him that he's confident in the coaching mm-hmm. that he's put together, but he's also confident in some of – in his his um, personnel. Yeah, they, yeah I, I was listening to him yesterday, and I was just like, okay – they're ready to they're ready to go yeah honestly i i got that same vibe and i was gonna ask you about that so i'm glad you brought it up but what i also noticed is they are learning from past mistakes and yes they are we talked about this with mike mccarthy yesterday yeah. kind of saying hey i'm not going to get emotional with this green bay reunion i just want to win i don't care who's on the other side of the ball yeah I just want to win. I'm not going to, you know, he talked about regretting bringing up his past to the locker room. And I'm glad that he did that last season. Um, But I'm also really glad that he is mature enough to kind of learn that that wasn't the approach to take, that it got in the players' heads. And he said, this is a player's game. It's not about me. Mm -hmm. And I don't want them to feel like they have to speak on my behalf when it comes to this. Mm -hmm. And we kind of started to hear that uh, earlier this week after the game. Dak talked about, oh, I'm sure this will mean a lot to Mike. J. Ron Kerr said it on a conference call. I don't think you'll hear that going into the locker room he Wednesday or Thursday. Quick, yeah. I think he's he's going to make it very clear. We're just here to win. It doesn't matter who we play. It, and it kind of becomes like a faceless opponent at this point, yeah. no matter who you play going forward. All right, well, the Cowboys are here to win. They better be here to win on Sunday against Green Bay. We're going to break down that matchup coming up in the next break. You're watching Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. We'll be right back. We know that juicy, cheesy, grilled-to-perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby! The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola a journey to Foodopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home. But to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation. So you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today. Dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. is your 2023 Cowboys fan of the year and now he needs your help vote for Sean to be given the ultimate title of the NFL fan of the year presented by Captain Morgan by casting your vote at nfl.com slash fan of the year go vote for our guy Sean please and thanks go it. vote right now I don't care what you're doing unless you're driving don't do that that's dangerous oh, excuse me. are you okay mm-hmm. oh, okay Ooh, yeah I caught slipping okay yeah a little bit all right. It's all the film you're watching. That yawn got me. I was up. I know. Watching Green Bay film last I, night. Yeah, I was going to ask you. Uh, it this is all that. Cowboys, Green Bay. Oh, the history runs deep between these two teams since, what, 19, 1996? 1966. I'm sorry. My, my number's a little bad. Mm-hmm. 66. Uh, but, no, just talking about this Green Bay offense, um, I know six of their lead receivers are all either rookies <laughs> <clears throat> or second year guys um but they're very talented of course you have a guy like jordan love who's what, four years now in the league mm-hmm. um but this is his first year really starting yeah. um where are your concerns as far as this offense let's start with jordan love what does he do well Scouting um, report. really <laughs> so really i mean i was just looking at how quick his release is mm-hmm. and um he throws really well on the move you know cowboys have had some some trouble with uh, quarterbacks that stram- scramble. Now, he's not a guy that's about to just be like, 
<clears throat> you know, like shaking, baking and stuff. But he, he will go get yardage when he needs to. Uh, with him, pressure isn't enough. He's, mm. he's honestly, um, I, he's so young that... Again, it takes time to gain a pocket presence and to feel pressure and stuff. He will step up in the pocket and make a throw on the move. And sometimes he just will sit back there and he don't care that pressure is coming. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't care that the left tackle is literally like on his hip. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm making this pass, big dog. And um, whereas that's great, I do think there should be some opportunities for maybe some batted balls. I, with the Cowboys defense, the pursuit to him is going to have to be violent. It's going to have mm-hmm. to be consistent. And again, like I said, I don't think pressure is enough he's really fear fearless in that way he has a poise to him also too in the hurry up like Mm -hmm. when they go quick Mm -hmm. game he he is on it and he the arm talent is there i was just um i was impressed by him watching him but i do think if if you're gonna play soft coverage he's gonna cook you dog Mm -hmm. he gets rid of the ball really fast he's decisive they do a lot motion and all that stuff and we'll get into that later and tomorrow whatever but off rip I just think he's tall. He stands in the pocket. He delivers a good ball. Um, really, honestly, throwing the ball, I, I think he has so much room to grow, but he's good right now. Where you can catch him slipping is heavy, heavy, heavy pressure affecting him, actually hitting him. Mm-hmm. You have to get hits on him. Yeah. Because he's just, I can't explain it. He's just young and he's fearless. He's going to find a way to extend yeah. He's yeah. just fearless in that sense. It's like He doesn't care that he's getting pressure. So if you are, like, Cowboys are going to have to finish when yeah. they get to, get to him. Um, but then also, too, he'll put the ball on the ground. Mm-hmm. He's still working on that ball security, which happens with some of these young guys. Horse but fumble time. Yeah, he's still working on that ball security. But overall, really love his game. And I'm excited for him. You love Jordan Love's game? I love his game. <laughs> I do. I'm excited. I don't think I've ever him. heard her say that about I, I any either. opposing quarterback. He's. Season. I have. No, oh, I don't remember like that. that. Not like that girl. <laughs> no, I, I don't even recall that. No, it, it's it's cool to watch him. It yeah. really is. It's just uh, you obviously want the Cowboys to beat him this week. Um, was it you yesterday that I was talking to that told me he has a little bit of an Aaron Rodgers flair to him? Yeah, he got the, his release. When you talk about. Like Aaron Rodgers, one of the most distinct things to me is how quickly he releases the ball. Mm-hmm. And Jordan has some of that in him where if he sees it, he's like yeah. he's it's yeah. it's quick. It's, it doesn't take any time now. Some of these receivers is wide open for other reasons. Mm-hmm. Very true. Um because Chicago didn't put no pressure on him. <laughs> I said, baby, y'all gonna run single high the whole game. <laughs> you ain't gonna show up. You ain't gonna change no looks, nothing. So I mean, anyway, uh yeah, I, I one thing that stands out to me is that very similar to the Cowboys at the beginning of the season, you remember they were moving the ball really well in between the 20s, yeah. moving up and down the field, but there was a cap on that red zone. Mm. And so they still have some of that too, where mm-hmm. they they still, I don't, I don't know where they rank score. I think they scored 22 points a game, which Thanks when you look. look at how many TDs he has and stuff, you say to yourself like, what? how do they do that? They struggle a little bit in the red zone, yeah. which is expected with a rookie quarterback because yeah. he's still – it's condensed down there mm-hmm. and stuff. So um, I, I, I think the Cowboys will have some opportunities there. Like I said, we'll get into it more. But from the quarterback, yeah. he's fun. Uh, he throws well on the move. If you're going to pressure him, you better finish because he's going to stand up. In there. He's going to stay in the pocket and make plays. You know what really stood out mm-hmm. to me is their efficiency on third and 10-plus. Here's the thing. <laughs> They'll make it. Uh, the Packers had a third down conversion rate of 33.3% on third and 10 plus in the last four weeks of the regular season, fourth best in the NFL. Cowboys defense allowed a third down conversion rate of 44.4% on third and 10 plus in the last four weeks, second worst in the NFL. So this is a game mm. where, you know, we usually talk about keeping everybody behind the sticks mm-hmm. and it's a game of inches and you have to do that on first and second down. You cannot even count that in that third down situation that he's not going to make a play. He is fearless, and mm-hmm. that's where it comes into play is third and ten, he's not afraid. He's still going to sling that ball. But what I did notice when I was watching some stuff and taking some notes, getting all the stats together, is he loves to throw down the middle of the field. He does. So I your safeties yeah. are really going to have to have a game, which makes you really hopeful considering what you've seen in the last two weeks the reemergence of guys like Jordan Lewis, Donovan Wilson. Jaron, I'm really yeah. glad. Uh, and Jaron Curse talked mm-hmm. about this earlier this week. He said they're hitting strides at the right time. They are. And that's coming in play. 
fourth best in the NFL uh, for throwing up the middle of the season. Cowboys have allowed 10.1 yards per drop back when defending passes up the middle of the season. So um, this offense is going to test this Cowboys defense. Sure. It's not going to be an easy feat. Where I do see this whole conversation of them being a young offense, a young team overall. This is the youngest team heading into the play the playoffs. Hello, I almost said postseason and playoffs. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just got excited. Um, is there's opportunity when you have guys like Tank Lawrence who knows how to kind of prey on younger opponents, that he knows how to be patient with it. And I, I think your veteran presence on the other side of the ball here on this Cowboys defense, Jonathan Hankins, is going to come in handy in this game because they know uh, if anything you even see little things how to get penalties on the other side <laughs> take advantage of that youth and that inexperience mm -hmm. or you let it burn you and they're rejuvenated and they get their hype going and uh, you fall behind but yeah this cow this um, Green Bay offense definitely poses threats to uh, this Cowboys defense overall. It's not going to be an easy game what whatsoever. My bad. I didn't mean to cut you off like that. No, we're good. What concerns me kind of um, is the fact that this is an offense that can run the football effectively with Aaron Jones um, and make the deep ball. Um, and what, I cannot pronounce his name. Dontavious Wicks, is that it? Uh -huh. Dontavious Wicks. That's, right. um, that's one of their lead receivers. And I think for him, um, he's fast. Uh, I kind of took notes on how he runs routes. He can create separation. He's um, big too. He's big, tall, tall two six foot one, two oh six. Uh, but one thing that I do notice is that if they use him in pass pro, he's not really good with that. Thank you for bringing mm, that he's up. He's not good at, mm. that, good so at glad, that at I'm, all. I'm so glad that you brought that up because that mm -hmm. literally was where I was going with that. Yeah, he's not good at all in pass pro, and that's like the complete opposite of the way that we use our receivers, like CD and yes. Cooks every now and then. Um, I, I noticed that, so that could be somewhere where we could take advantage of. Um, but he's a guy that they're going to go to for big plays for sure. Um, I know when he was in college, his junior year, I believe, uh, he had nearly 20-plus yards on half of his receptions in 2021 so that's a big concern for me but Aaron Jones also they use him as a receiver yep and yes. also coming out the backfield so I don't know and the way that they disguise their looks it concerns me as yeah well they do too. a lot it's they do a great lot point. of different things no and, and when you mentioned Aaron Jones uh so I, I did some digging because I was mm -hmm. trying to when I was watching them I was like well where is uh AJ Dillon yeah. Mm -hmm. He's dealing with a thumb and a neck injury. Oy. Um, he, I think they did activate his practice window or whatever. So mm -hmm. I think he's still going to be kind of slow to come back because he's dealing with some stuff. Mm -hmm. So I've been looking at how they're manufacturing the run game. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is that they're using their wide receivers in the run game. They're, they're using yeah. their wide receivers in the run game. They're using them in motion. They're using them for jet sweeps. Um, oh, I they love bring a good them. Jet sweep. You know this. Yes, they bring them behind the formation. They do some like fake reverses yeah. and stuff like that. Um, I called uh, number eighteen. I don't remember what his name is. I wrote it down. Uh, I called him the Motion Man the because motion. that's <laughs> that's what they're doing. Because Aaron Jones can't do it all by himself. Yeah. He just can't. Yeah. And the reason why, he's always done some things in the in the passing game, but they're doing it even more now, to your point, to throw people off kilter and to also they, – they're setting up big plays by having him kind of slip out to the flat and then act like, okay, he's, mm -hmm. he's catching the ball and stuff. So I am – now, AJ Dillon, there you go. AJ Dillon. Yeah. There's a lot of people who are he has I have to look huge it up. calves. That's how I remember him. <laughs> what? It, that's literally like yeah, his, no, that's... his claim to fame. Anyway, yeah. it's so funny. That's like the second time I've heard that this week. Yes. But like on another podcast I do yeah. uh, for for work, my co-host was like, his calves are the size of my torso. They're like, insane. It's crazy. Um, so I googled it and I was like, yeah, he does have some nice. But. Calves, yeah. uh, but yes, okay. So <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but but yeah, number eighteen for them, Malik Keith. They use him. They bringing him around the formation with this orbit motion. They, they're setting up like they're setting up a lot with their motion. But they also too, they be doing these these plays be take forever. Yeah, you don't got a lot of time with the Cowboys boss. That's true, mm -hmm. especially if they're reading it. So I wonder if they do go more quick game, whatever the case may be. Um, so for me, I to your point about Aaron Jones, Cowboys fans have a huge fear. Of Aaron Jones, just because of what he has done yeah. to them in the past, you wasn't here. Yeah, but we was here. Uh, we experienced that. And we remember. He's it was 
Oh, it's no. Aaron Jones cannot be like have in the year last year when they played. It was. He was having a pretty good year. It was bad to his standard this year. I don't know how he feels. He's dealt with some injuries. Yeah, and he's stuff a little like banged that. up. He's, he's, a little, he's a little banged up. This he's week. a little banged up. I don't see the same explosiveness, but mm-hmm. they will attack the edges. Mm-hmm. He will cut backside and and take it to the house. He still has that ability, but I will say, looking at this offensive line too, I was more impressed by their offensive line than what I thought I was going to be, but baby, these tackles are catchy. (laughs) And what I mean by that is they're waiting for the contact to come to them, and they're not being the aggressors. Baby, I seen that left tackle of Rasheed Walker. I seen him get walked into his (laughs) walked into his that's what i'm talking about is that their tackles i think there should be some opportunity there for the cowboys to yeah. take advantage of their tackles and also to their center josh myers he's given up 28 pressures 20 hurries five sacks and six qb hits this season Oy. something that i did notice mm-hmm. about uh the packers as well is you know how we always talk about uh on the cowboys offensive side hey quit running the ball on first down that's what they love to do. They will something the Packers will do <laughs> is they will run the ball sure on will. first down. So you have an opportunity early on to shut down the run because they're going to do it. They're yeah. going to test you on first down. Aaron Jones uh, will absolutely do that. In fact, let me see. I wrote this down. He ranked. Da, 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 hold on. Uh, first uh, in the NFL as he averaged 6.4 yards per carry on first down in the last four weeks of the regular season. What that tells me, he's on, we talk about hitting strides at the right time. Aaron is coming back from injury. He's hitting his stride at the right time, uh, unfortunately, uh, for the Cowboys' run defense. Cowboys allowed 5.5 yards per carry on first down in the last four weeks of the regular season, third worst in the NFL. However, I think that's more measured by what you saw uh with the Dolphins and Buffalo, not so much the final two games uh, that they played. So run defense going to be tested, and that's when it starts up front in the trenches. Jonathan Hankins, luckily... Yeah, on the up back and up, big last week, and it's going to be difference. vital. He, his presence is going to be vital in this game. I'm not. I don't. Uncle Hank. I will say, <laughs> Unc. I'm like, Unc. Um, he'd be like, Aisha, I'm, I'm 31. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot we're close to an age. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> but, but no. Um, I, I also will say that this Green Bay Packers team, they have had instances where they, they have, they'll go score. Cowboys just got to score. Yeah. Because when you scoring, it takes all this running and taking your time. It takes that ability out of your opponent's uh, playbook. Cause they, they're playing catch-up. So it is mm-hmm. going to be important for the Cowboys' defense, um, well, offense, rather, to score. And I know we're going to get into that tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. But, um, no, I just – you have to challenge this offense. <laughs> yeah. You have to challenge them. And what I mean by that is when you talk about the safeties, he's good at attacking the middle of the field, show him something he ain't seen. Mm-hmm disguises things of that nature mm-hmm. maybe showing and going some blitzing whatever the case may be can't fall for the window dressing in no this. because Not. if you're gonna play again if you're gonna play straight up single high straight up zone with them they're gonna find ways to beat it yeah. matt lafleur yeah. and those guys do a good job over there um linebackers in this defensive line are really gonna have to trust their film study which i know tank will <laughs> you know that mm-hmm. but also too yep not be fooled by the secondary motion. They do a lot of stuff behind the line of scrimmage using their tight ends, their running backs, their wide receivers. They are begging for you to look the other way. It creates Mm -hmm. spacing. It it creates a lot of wide open lanes. And honestly, like we talk about like their tight ends too. Like their their tight ends really they're dealing with some injuries. Yeah. But they are extra blockers for all intent yeah. purposes. Like they aren't doing a whole bunch of catching. They're trying to help out these tackles and help mm-hmm. out in the running game a lot. So it's gonna have to be all hands on deck. I'm really curious to see. Um I have to get I'm gonna get more into the film this week and stuff, but off rip, I think there's some favorable matchups there. And what did you mention? You mentioned something about the Cowboys being bad on what? Third, third down. Oh, third, uh, third and ten. On first down runs. On first oh. down runs. But then it was no, it was a third down defense. Yeah, third and ten. Sorry, right? I got you. Let's see. It was yeah, a, third and ten. Third and ten. Third and third ten, and ten. Plus. That has been frustrating me plus. maybe for the last two weeks where they will get a team behind the sticks mm-hmm. and it's like a third. It was a third and twelve this yep. game and if I'm convert. not mistaken. Yeah. Yep. And the team converted. You can't have that. Yeah. You can't have that 
with Explosive with this plays. team. Yeah, you can't have that with this team. So and you I'd, saw Aaron Jones do a lot of that um, against Chicago last week. Yeah. Um, they'd be like in third and long situations and next you know, a big play. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, something to definitely watch out for. But we're going to take our second break before we wrap things up and still kind of break down this Cowboys defense, uh, Green Bay offense. You're watching Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. We'll be right back. At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home. But to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation so you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today, dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. You know that sound anywhere. It's the crisp crunch of that first nacho chip. With its perfect cheese to sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans, it's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. dining, shopping, and experiences from over 20-plus restaurants, shops, and more at the Star District. Check out Women's Boutique's Fleece Style in Frisco and the official boot partner of the Dallas Cowboys, Luke Casey. Enjoy New Year's celebrations at Snowbird Cocktail Lounge, Concrete Cowboy, and City Works Eatery and Port House. Visit thestardistrict.com for the full directory. And if you are going to uh, come into town for the playoff game this Sunday, the Pro Shop has some goodies as well. You can check out. Sorry, my seat wouldn't come up. <laughs> are you? It's okay. There we go. Okay. Okay, there you go. We're good. Bye, guys. Here, hello. All right, hello. We missed you. Uh, no, uh, back to this Cowboys defense, um, Green Bay Packers offense. Um, we are kind of talking off set or off the show a little bit about Jaden Reed um mm. what what does he kind of do that is a little dangerous yeah, I like him <laughs> I, I remember him from the draft and um immediately seeing him and being impressed with his mm -hmm. speed and how he marries his speed to his route running which because there's a lot of guys who are fast but mm -hmm. they're not football fast or they're not in route like running a route and they're still fast brandon yeah. cooks has that ability too where his speed is on display he's mm -hmm. not just because some guys are like they're just burners right they can run past you but to be able to incorporate it into your game and so i think they're finding i wrote down they're finding unique ways to use his speed mm -hmm. and they use him they get him running starts like you're yeah. talking about coming from motion. And it, they call it push motion, rather, basically, where it's just this guy's coming behind the formation and he's basically able to – he has a running start so yeah. he can go past your uh, your secondary or he can go past your linebackers or whoever. So to Jess's point earlier when we are talking about the safeties, they really put a lot of stress on you. His speed and the angles he takes and some of the things they do out of the backfield yeah. puts a lot of stress on your safeties to take good angles mm -hmm. and to um, tackle well like it, it, it really does because he they put you off they, they understand leverage well I mm -hmm. think as an offense and so for me with him it's just they're doing things to get him open and for his speed to prevail and when he's open dog he's open y'all mm -hmm. like he's like and again I do also think it's because of how defenses are electing to play them like have mercy why are y'all <laughs> all just they are tearing this cover one yeah. up just killing it this single high up so for me i just i like the things that they're doing bringing their guys behind the formation and being able to get them um in good spacing to for him to be able for jordan to be able to deliver the ball to him and be confident because he will tight throw in some tight windows yeah. but he's not having to with Jaden because mm. he typically has to step on people and mm. also you talked about their struggles in the red zone and struggle scoring well guess uh who is seventh in the league for receiving touchdowns uh Jaden reed 
It's impressive that part. Eight receiving touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns. So if you want to keep an eye on anybody in the red zone uh, when they do march downfield, because it's not a problem of them marching downfield. They're extending drives. The Packers offense is getting downfield. It's just scoring yeah. uh, that seems to be the issue there too. But uh, that's your guy to keep an eye on because guess what? Look at this. He's only had three drops all season. Um, three that's crazy. drops. I mean, three. That's the guys. That's one hand. Three. So how should you, if if you're DQ, huh? how should you plan um, to defend this passing attack? I mean, really, they do it all. I mean, so how do you plan to defend them? Honestly, I call me crazy. You're Cowboys crazy. run. Cowboys run a lot of they they run a lot of men but the mm -hmm. last few weeks and stuff they've changed up some looks they've yeah. done some zone they've they've shown that they're going to run man but then they go zone like they've done some different things i think you definitely when you're playing a young quarterback mm -hmm. you got to do things to switch up looks and things like that but also too similar to miami in my opinion you ain't getting no free releases big dog i'm sorry yeah like it, it is it's gonna be harder to defend because again they're bringing him out the backfield and they're mm -hmm. doing all this stuff so i i, I think also you just got to get a hat on him you just got to get hands on yeah on some of these guys now the rest of the gentlemen on the team i think that they they still have some other players but he's the he's the money maker he's the guy that mm -hmm. uh jordan is looking for in scramble drill as yeah. well when he's scrambling and looking for stuff so for me I think you just got to get hands on these guys. Okay. Also, the pass deflections, yeah. forced fumbles, those are going to be really key in this game. Yeah, this um, is a yak team, too, to your it, point. It so is. This is a yak team, so you, you can tackle. It's, the thing is, is <laughs> don't get me started on this whole tackling conversation. <laughs> They've um, been okay. Yeah. Well, they have been okay. They've but been the problem better. is, is when you're talking explosive plays, it's not just tackling that has been the issue. Mm -hmm. It's you know, the misdirection that they kind of fall for sometimes, I've noticed. Tackling has been fine, but they have to continue to do it well against a good team. And, yes, you saw them tackle well against the Lions. You Miami. saw them tackle well against Miami. But but you have to eliminate explosive play opportunity mm -hmm. for this team. They will get you on long yardage situations. So keeping them behind the sticks is not enough in a game like this. Yeah. And usually it is. Usually it's enough in a game to say, hey, just keep them behind the sticks, keep them at third and long. It starts in first and second down. This is not the game for that. This is the game where it's going to test your ability to allow explosive plays, which the Cowboys have struggled with off and on throughout the season. Screen game, too. Which room will be tested the most I think in this game? <sighs> yeah, in this game. Safety. Okay. Uh, cornerback too. Uh, it depends. Level. Second, it yeah. depends on uh, Stephon Gilmore's health. I think too. I, I think okay. if if he's available or not, that kind of switches things around. Um, Dan did talk about that yesterday, mm -hmm. saying you know we kind of are always ready for situations like this because yeah. it's the nature of the game. But I think if Gilly's not out there, it's it, it changes some things uh, around a lot. But overall, for me, it's. What I want to see is I want to see it start up front. I don't even want to see it get to the secondary level. <laughs> which they, which again, there's some favorable matchups across this offensive line and and what they do. But and, and again, like I said, uh, they also too the left guard is having to help out the left tackle. Mm -hmm. The tight ends are having to help out the offensive line, so it takes away from them. And I think they are going to have to, <laughs> they don't have to chip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that's that's the thing too. Like we're talking about we're talking about them and and how good they are and stuff. They have to account for the Cowboys' defensive line mm -hmm. and those guys too. And they are they're gonna have their hands full as yeah. well uh, with dealing with the Cowboys' pressure and also to having to chip when those tight ends are taken away as passing options. You best believe your wide receivers better be able to win one on one. Yeah, and so they yeah. are. They are th the Cowboys' secondary. The Cowboys' defense is probably the best defense they've seen in this four week run and stuff Very so well we're, we're talking about them being a good team and them having things they can do you also have to look at the other side because mm -hmm. baby if they can't block it up it's going to be a long day yeah. and as far as you mentioned something really key about the misdirection and stuff jess they run their screen game heavy yeah so their screen game the cowboys have had some trouble with the screen game you yeah. saw it last minute in miami you saw you've seen it they're going to have to trust their eyes. They're going to have to rally and tackle. I would love to see some of those safeties, Donovan Wilson, those guys. Jordan Lewis has been involved in the backfield, making some tackles and, and doing some things behind the line of scrimmage yeah. as well. All right. Well, now we're going to switch gears tomorrow, talking Cowboys offense versus 
Packers defense. Uh, but that's a wrap for today's show. You're watching Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. We'll see you tomorrow. Long this long. has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!